Good morning, everybody. I am here because I'm in the mood to make something just messy and quick and grungy. There was a piece of art or two pieces, a few pieces, in a recent, uh, the most recent Somerset studio where an artist did it's something about flying a cat, kite and not flying a cat, although, hey, um, anyway. So uh, she used book covers and decorated this part. So I was inspired. I wanna make a, a really quick art journal and let this be the outside. And we've got some really pretty artwork here. This was an old book, George MacDonald, The Princess and Curdy. And I just, I'm trying to figure out the best way to do this. I think instead of gluing, scratch that idea. That's such a pretty cover. Oh my goodness. I'm not sure what I'm going to do. Oh, I found something perfect. This little beautiful book right here. Look at the pages in that. Look at the edges. That is amazing. Now, this book, so those of you who are just gasping because I'm taking this book apart, the edges are chewed up. You could see a puff of dust come out of there. Um, these were at a thrift store. When I say these, I've got two of these. And I really bought them for the pages. And then I put it on the shelf because honestly, the book has a very unusual scent. Um, I think this is a pretty old book. Look at this, Paris. Well, I don't actually, I don't remember if I ever saw a date in here. I think, I thought I did, but then, I don't know, maybe I just looked it up. But again, I just love the pages in here. So we're gonna take it on down and look how beautiful that wear is right there. The spine is, is really coming apart. I mean, look, you barely have to, um, that, that took like minimal, minimal effort. That's pretty dry rotted. So let's make, and see there's no writing broken right here. So we're going to make this our messy cover. I think I want a neutral color of fabric. All right. I think I want a neutral color of fabric. So let's see if we can tear some strips this way. So there's one, two, I think these might be too, too wide. Actually, you know what? I just had a, wait a minute. I like strings, but for this, I don't want any strings out this way. You know what? We're just going to do some intuitive stuff here and whoa, that cap came right off. Look. ASMR. Let's put that right there and Bear in mind, this is a very fast, messy, intuitive bookmaking session. One of my sons has a birthday today, and he is coming over in just a little bit, and we're going to go get some Subway for lunch, and we're also going to pick up a cake and ice cream. Mm -hmm. So, there's that for now. And I've got to figure out how I want to do this. I think we're going to 
pull out some of my papers here that are kind of grungy and have been worked with some. There's one. Uh, that's kind of interesting. Let me put that in. Maybe that. Uh, these are some of the folders left over from the Dollar Tree challenge. What are we up to here? Oops, actually getting some glue on there. That's not good. I put way too much glue. That's okay. I need to move these down here. Ba, ba, ba. Um, that's a cool one. I love this. Um, so let's, which way do I want to tear this? I'll cut this. Maybe... My big scissors have all migrated to the other side of the workshop, and I just don't feel like getting up to go get them. That's really cool. I like that. Kind of cool and for okay we got to get creative here um we're gonna do something let's do something really interesting so let me get two more let's see how yeah that's gonna be really cool that needs to come down a tiny bit Let's move this so it can be drying, except one thing. Let me get my long arms labeled. And I think I want a couple of strips of this. That's a little too wide. This is perfect, let's cut that in half. So we've got one that's gonna go here. And let's put one here. There we go. Let's move this for now. And I am going to start I think, okay, so we want this fabric turned this way. That looks like an interesting enough piece to go right in the front. So I'm going to just Slide this into the stapler. Oh. Is this thing out of staples? Of course it is, because I had it lined up perfectly. More staples somewhere else. These staples are colored staples, so got different colors in there, and that makes it fun. But it's it's not necessary, but the staples are gonna show on the inside of these little strips of fabric or uh, si signatures. Okay, so that's good. Now let's line up the other one and then we'll have sort of a template, template, as some people say in North Carolina, template. Get this under here. I think it's gonna start going faster, hopefully, as we move along. So there's that one. And now I'm gonna just take the next, another piece of paper, and just let it be that one. And let's see if we can. So this, this, is, the, this is the only really tricky part, I think, is just 
And I think when you do something a few times, you get better at it. You know, probably what would help is some big paper clips to, um, to hold these things in place. So here's our little handy dandy text block. Oops, one fell out. Well, dang, wait, where was this one? Oh, okay, so this is the one downside to putting those big uh, paper clips in. It um, keeps, the, keeps the staples from totally, and see, I was trying to add one in the center. So let's just, let's go ahead and try to get this one in without the big paper clips. And that way, see, yeah, the staple went all the way through. This one doesn't have two staples in it. That's why it's acting up, but we're gonna fix all this. See, I just love doing stuff like this. I think I learn by just doing this crazy stuff. And it's just, I don't know, it's just so much fun. So if we can just drag all of this over here, we're just gonna do it and see. Yeah, so there's our little fancy, fancy text block. And now I'm gonna glue this, so I will use a paper clip right here. And we're just gonna glue these down. And you know how I love to journal or create art journals and junk journals. We'll do whatever we need to this to, um, to keep the pages in. But, you know, now that we've got them all relatively into place, it's gonna be easier, like maybe to put a stitch in with a needle and thread and have some pretty charms on the outside. I need to get some more of the fast grab tacky glue. That's my favorite because it does, it does grab and hold really fast. But this is one of the things I like about tacky glue overall. I said to tacky glue. Um, maybe I haven't had enough coffee this morning. It does seem to hold fast. All right, so that's pretty cool. I'm thinking that maybe this actually needs to be the front. We want this to be messy. Oh, look how beautiful that is. Ay, 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 I love it. I really want to work in this now, but it's going to have to sit and dry for a little bit. I know what I want to fill that book up with. I want to fill it up with just a lot of really um, intuitive sort of messy sketches and just practicing color and inks. This is just a scrap piece of paper that you can see already has some paint on it from other things. So here is the finished art journal. Obviously, I fast forwarded a little bit and didn't record everything, 
but I am sure that you get the gist of how the journal was created. Once these strips under here had dried, you saw me lay those down and glue them into place. I took two of the book pages that I thought were really pretty and glued them into the front and back. And then to reinforce the pages, which were just stapled onto the fabric strips, um, once, you know, once they were kind of in place and the book was dry, it was pretty easy just to take this um, cord. And this is a, probably like a, um, a jewelry cord. I love to get the hemp cord and uh, those types of cords in, in Michael's and other craft stores. They're, they're pretty strong, but it was easy once this journal had dried to go back through and just, just put two holes in, you know, go in this way and then kind of have to guesstimate. I used my finger on the inside as a pressure point to kind of feel where to put the needle through. And then I tied everything on the inside. I did tie one of the signatures on the outside so that I could hang the beads, and that signature was pretty much right in the center. And then, of course, it was fun playtime, just sketching and painting and trying different textures, trying different ink pens and crayons. I did pick these up recently. You all know how much I love these R2 pens from the Dollar Tree. It's the um, R2 Rollerball pen in black, but I haven't been able to find these for a while. I love these pens. This one's had some, some wear. I've got a few of those around the desk. I love these though. I noticed they have them in other colors now. So we have this bright purple and the blue. So I used these quite a bit to highlight around some of the words in here, like there's one. I wanted bright colors and a lot of different colors. Some of these pieces of paper came from just making pages from the jelly plate or the gel plate. Uh, I did some sketching. I looked at different faces and tried to continue practicing uh, face drawing and painting. I love the colors in this page. This is one of my favorites, I think. And it just says pink dress. I found a book recently that is full of amazing words. So I found some really fun words to cut out of that book. And uh, what is that book, by the way? Oh, Fair and Tender Ladies by Lee Smith. And now that I've been cutting words out of the book, I want to read the book. So I'm going to have to see if I can find another copy. And there's a little pocket. I wanted this book to feel interactive and just basically something to look at and read and think and be inspired. I love the heart here. So there's the R2 Rollerball. I built up a layer of texture paste and let that dry a little bit. Then I added a tiny bit of glue over the top and cut a piece of gauze to match this shape. And then of course there's paint. And I don't remember which, that, that those words came from a different book. Um, I was pulling from a couple of books and I love the bird sketches. She's kind of wild, I like her. She looks like she's got bright white eyeshadow and I love that she's faded. That's from a dip pen. You can hardly read that, and that was the goal. I wish the ink was a little bit darker, but that's okay. There's my dip pen, and then I do have some blue ink in here. It's hard to read, but it says, never be afraid to speak the love in your heart. And a lot of layers here. What kind of ripples are your actions making? I thought about this the other day because someone on the highway made a very dangerous, unsafe movement and, and really caused two of us to, to almost be involved in a wreck, maybe, maybe even more than two cars. Oh, it was so scary. I was in the right lane 
in the left lane, there was a truck completely stopped and waiting to turn. He was waiting for oncoming traffic. I could see in my rear view mirror, a car barreling towards this truck. I don't, my first thought was, oh my goodness, this, this, it was a van. This van coming up so fast does not see this truck that stopped. And as it approached, well, the speed limit in that area is 40. So I was doing 40. The truck was completely stopped. I bet the van coming up on us was doing 70 or 80 because it blew past us or between us. So as it approached, I realized it's gonna hit that truck right as I'm next to the truck. So I had to lock my brakes up. And I really think once that happened that the van was trying to just get around me. I don't think it wanted to have to stop for the truck. So it, you know, just kind of went right between me and that truck with barely room to get through. And I was shaking after that. I was very angry as well. And I watched as this van proceeded to tailgate other people. Um, only one of the taillights was working. And, you know, it, some cars got between me and the van over the next mile or two. But when I got up onto a different road, I saw it exit down onto the freeway. And you know how sometimes if you're exiting onto the freeway, some people behind you will tailgate you and they don't really even wait for you to get on the road. They take off around you. That's what this van did. did. I watched it from a bridge overhead. And I don't know, I, I thought about how one action can affect so many people. And even, even beyond driving, things that we say um, you know, everything, maybe the way we handle our, what we've been blessed with, our money, um, our property, the way we interact with strangers, and just so many things. So it made me really stop and think, what kind of ripples am I creating with my actions and my attitude every day? And I want them to be good, <laughs> good ripples, the kind that make you happy. Uh, I went searching yesterday in a recycle uh, facility or area for rusty metal, and I found some really fun, cool pieces. Definitely looking forward to using these. I love the, um, the little piece that looks like a gear, and I think there was a... a bigger part to that in here somewhere. Oh, there. Isn't that cool? It's got the raised areas on it. Those were taped together. I don't know why. You can still see the tape, though. So then, back to this. I love the really big postage stamp. And I love the colors on this page. Just some scribbling and... That is with an ink stamp. I then went back and added some different colors and used the black pen. I love this. I love little things that are interactive like that. And I love that you can see her eye through there as well. So, you know, think about that when you're putting pages in, it's fun to put things in that have holes punched out of them, um, circles, different shapes. There's half of a circle from one of these that ended up being punched out and I used that on the distressed page in the art journal that I made a few days ago. That, that line is from Fair and Tender Ladies. You know how you embroider, honey, just hush. And then this butterfly was stained to a really dark with some alcohol ink. There's one of the rusty washers sewn into place there. Um, I love the symbolism on this page. So I don't know the context of this sentence, but it made me think about how women were always kept in their place. Um, you know how you embroider, honey, just hush. I don't know if that was a, a compliment or um, an insult, but women were pretty much judged on uh, home skills and just staying in their places, and they weren't really allowed to venture out too far or do too many things. And I'm thinking like the 1800s and earlier. Uh, and then I punched out a little piece of map here. Like maybe she's thinking of, you know, going places and doing things and really not allowed to. So I made the butterfly black and put this weight on it. Like she will never get away. Make the most of it while you wait. 
I can tell you where I heard that. I was watching um, Roots and Refuge Farm video and uh, Jessica and Maya, that's the couple there that have that farm and they're about to move. So um, she was talking about the early days of learning how she wanted to garden and learning things. You know, she's got a huge, huge farm now and I think moving to something even bigger. But um, she was talking about making the most of what she had while she waited for something better. And um, I probably should put her name. That way I will remember where that came from. And then of course, there's a guinea feather from my mom's farm. Now ain't that pretty? That's from Fair and Tender Ladies. On the front, I used uh, one of these images from one of the downloads in my Patreon. I just cut that out and glued it to the front and then used some beeswax on the front of the whole thing. It's a little bit rough. Um, I need, I used to have something to melt the wax in and apply it, but I don't have that anymore after moving so many times. I've got to get something different. <laughs> I used a really like this makeshift, a metal tin that I just held close to the frame. And Jennifer, I believe you sent me the beeswax. So thank you for that. I love that. So that is the finished journal. I think I've told you everything about how I constructed this. You know, it's a little bit wobbly, but I love this book. It's, I mean, the pages, everything's in here. It's in here good. Not gonna fall out, but you know, it's just, since it has the fabric strips here, it is not quite as rigid as a regular hardcover book cover. Hard book cover, hardcover, whatever. So that is that. I'm moving on to the next project. I will be back really soon working on getting some things into the shop today. I've got to go to the post office today and send out some things. So I will be back really, really soon and bye for now.